Greetings from Heflin Baptist Church Sunday School Adult Department. Well, you're lucky. We've introduced a new study today, and it has six sessions in it. And the name of the study is, Why Do I Need the Church? Well, we all know that every part of the body is essential. And if one part of the body becomes disconnected or quits functioning, then it's detrimental to the individual part as well as to the body as a whole. That's what we're thinking about today, but we're talking about the body of Christ. Christians are not meant to be isolated or live in an isolated world like maybe some of us have been doing lately, but to belong to the body of Christ, which is to best expressed in the church, the church is the best connection in its local setting where we are members and we enjoy each other with the same purposes. Things have changed a little bit, I realize, but we are still the body of Christ. And we can connect, and we are in different ways, like this way. God's design is for you and me as Christians to live and to serve together as His body, being joined together by Christ. So we do need the church, and the church needs us. You know, we are deepened in our understanding of God's call to the church and His body when we discover that we're not alone in our service, and we're not alone in our ministry. Our services are very enhanced, even multiplied, as we walk alongside each other and support each other. So I've gotten to the first lesson of this study of six. And the name of the lesson is, We Are Joined Together. And the purpose, or the point, excuse me, of this session is that when we come to Christ, we come because we are part of the body of Christ. And in Ephesians, which is our study, Paul focuses on the unity of God's people. You know, God created new people in Christ Jesus. New people are called believers, Christians. He's saying the distinction that used to be between Christians and Jews is no longer. The major theme of Ephesians is the unity of the church. And that unity of the church is through Christ by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. People who have come to faith in Christ, who belong to a unique group, because we're not only members of a local congregation, we become part of the body of Christ, and that means that we have brothers and sisters all over this world. The world over. Our first scripture is Ephesians 1, 20 through 23. Listen for Christ's relationship to the church. Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him on the right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principalities and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age, but also in the age to come. So we're thinking about what just what did Paul just say to us? He said to us that God the Father had raised Jesus from the dead. He had been in that tomb three days. God, which is the Father, raised Jesus from the dead. And the second related idea here that we just read about is that God seated Jesus at his right hand in the heavenly places or heavenly realms, depending on your translation. The verse also tells us that Jesus is placed as king and ruler above all other rulers and all other authorities. He's above all powers, all dominions, all authority of any kind, whether they were in the past, 
the present or the future. God covered it all. Jesus is the ruler and the king above all. So for Christ to be head over all things, especially to the church, means that Christ is the supreme authority to the church. He's the supreme authority to all believers of all times. He's the supreme authority to all dominations. In other words, Jesus is in charge. He has the power, he has the authority, and he has the wisdom to cover and carry out his purposes and his plans. You know, since Jesus is the head and the church is the body, our scripture tells us what functions of the church and that the church must bow to God's authority. All believers and all congregations must follow His commands, His purpose, His trust and guidance, His and being dependent on Him as far as His strength and His wisdom is concerned in the activities and ministries of our church. I think about Brent Thompson, who is our preacher. You know, we're so blessed to have him. And he, we know from what he says in that pulpit that he follows God's word and he follows God's guidance and he encourages you and me to do the same. Being part of a church is different from being part of any other organization because our leader is God himself. As we just talked about, he has that apart authority. He has that power to accomplish his purposes for us as individuals and the local congregations in any denominations in worldwide body of believers. In other words, he is on top of all. He loves each one of us individually, whether we live in Heflin, Alabama, or in Bangkok, Thailand. Just remember that he, so we've heard from the pulpit, as Brent reminds us nearly every time we see him, he and God love us and there's nothing we can do about it. Brent, we're counting on that. If we forget the Christ, we forget that Christ is the head of the church, then we fail. We probably will become discouraged go into the wrong direction and not accomplish our purpose. So we need to remember that Christ is our leader. Our knowledge of God's authority is very important and our knowledge of His control makes us secure. We can depend on His leadership. And this is what we have to do. This is the challenge. When we remember that God is in control, we have no worries. You know, in the midst of the current events that seem out of control, such as the pandemic, and of course the attacks on our culture, and the polarization of politics, we can be rest assured that God, I keep saying this over and over, and that's the purpose of the lesson, we are the body of Christ, and God is still in control. God will accomplish His purpose no matter what human or satanic evil arises. We can make Christ the head of our lives as individuals by worshiping daily. We're to be in awe of Him. We know who He is and what He has done to praise Him and to thank Him and, and don't take the blessings that He's given us for granted. We're to submit to Christ. We're submit to submit to His leadership. We're to read and meditate on God's Word. In other words, pray to God. Talk to God. And here is uh, an acronym that I want to share with you that's a suggestion to include in our prayers. An acronym is, means that each letter that you see stands for a word. When you see this, you see Acts. And of course we know Acts is a book in the New Testament. 
but we're taking it apart and that each letter stands for something that will help us when we're praying. And the first one is adoration. Second one is confession. Thanksgiving and supplication. So when using it as an acronym, we are encouraged to adore, confess, show thanksgiving, and offer our forgiveness and, and beg for whatever we want done. Acts, an acronym. You know, when Jesus or the Spirit of Christ fills our lives, lives will be different. We will witness to a hurting world. We will be victorious in our own Christian living. Not perfect, but victorious. We will faithfully use our resources in glorifying God and in building the church. Remember, as believers, we are part of the body of Christ. I'm going to read the next scripture, which is Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. Now listen to God's gift, especially in verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Jesus Christ for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in him. There are four critical words in verse 8 that I've tried to emphasize. I'm going to go over them again. Saved, first one was, was saved, Grace, faith, and gift. We are saved by God's grace. We receive His love and blessings that we do not deserve. That's grace. Our salvation is a gift that we cannot earn. When we respond to God's remedy to our sin problem, that is by faith. And we declare our belief in, belief in Jesus' death and Jesus' resurrection, which paid the penalty that we deserved. Why have we been saved? To do good works. However, we are not saved by good works. We are saved for the purpose of doing good works. You know, we're to follow God's plan and in in what He has planned for us in our service and in our ministry. And uh, each, one, each one of us, we have to remember that we are the members of the body of Christ. And we also are to serve the unbelieving and to bring them to Christ. So as believers, God has a plan for you and for me. He gives us grace, but He also expects us to do good works. I have another acronym. I know you love acronyms. When you look at this, you think of the word grace. But remember, an acronym means that each letter stands for another word. And so this is our grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. Our grace is God's riches. We enjoy God's riches at Christ's expense. Wow. Wow. I don't know what else to say about that. That just blows my mind. God has bestowed blessings on you and to me. And the most important one is salvation. Even though we don't deserve it. Thank you, God, for grace. God's love is expressed to us without requirement, without returning that love. You know, the love that's expressed is expressed to all people, whether they have received Him or not. 
Jesus died for the sin of all children, women, and men, whether they have responded in faith or not. And it's important for you and me to know that we are God's workmanship. We are God's art. Can you believe it? We're God's work of art. We are to find our purpose in life and not say we don't have anything to do. Talk to God. Listen to the Holy Spirit. He has a purpose for you and for me. Each one of us has been given one or more spiritual gift, abilities which we minister to others that are also in the body of Christ and to those that are unbelieving. God uses your abilities and even my disabilities to accomplish His purposes. Please know this. We are specially designed tool. The tool in the hands of the master artist. Make you sit up a little straighter and a little smile on your face. Do you realize that you are a specially designed tool in the hands of the master artist? Our last scripture for this session is about members together in God's household. And I'll read Ephesians 2, 19 through 22, if you'd like to read along with me. Ephesians 2, 19 through 22. And listen to the theme of this scripture. Who we are in Christ. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. You and I are part of the church. We have to function properly for the church to fit together. The scripture just told us, which I think we already know, that the union of all believers, and he's talking about foreigners, he's talking about strangers, he's talking about aliens, he's talking about citizens, family members, the foundation, the temple people. He's identifying what and who part of the church. All believers. He identifies the apostles, he identifies the prophets as the foundation of God's holy building. And himself, Christ himself, is the chief cornerstone. You know, Christ is the essential part of the foundation, which we've been talking about a lot. Lately, I've noticed the cornerstone, which is his place in the church, and it is a place of prominence and a place of honor. That's our Lord and Savior Christ. There are other walls which and foundation parts which the apostles and the prophets can, can hold on to and to present and to provide. But the stones, the living stones, are you and me with the body of Christ. And if the whole building is not functioning properly, it means that there are a few or many living stones that are not doing as God wants them to do. So to continually align ourselves with Christ, which is the cornerstone, you and I need to read and to heed His teachings. Talk to Him in prayer. Listen to Him. Be still and know that He is God. Be sensitive to the urgings of His Holy Spirit and apply Christ's truth that you receive in the preaching service or in your Bible study, in your prayers, in your individual readings. Consider the importance of fitting together. 
fitting together. That's a challenge. We have different elements in the structure of the building, but what we need to do is to remember that we are part. We are the living stone, one living stone, and that we need to fit in the part that God has for us. Maybe we need to make a few adjustments. Uh, you know, when you first get married or you're in a family, it's not just you anymore. Well, being body of Christ, it is not just you anymore. It is all of us together. And together, we make the body of Christ. Maybe we need to make some suggestions of, on uh, how we should change. Uh, I don't know. Maybe this will step on some toes and maybe it won't. But just listen to this. Maybe our attitude needs some arranging. Maybe we are a little bit too important. Or maybe on the other end of the scope. Maybe we need to gain confidence. We always need to have respect for other people. We need to respect, respect their opinions. Whether we follow through or not, it happens to be the decision of the body of Christ. You and I need to be willing to minister where we're needed. And we need to use those spiritual gifts that God has given us. When we realize that we get to heaven, none of us, I'm not sure this will insult you or not, but none of us will be 100% correct on our theology. In closing, I think it's time for me to hush. Lee, I'm going to uh, just read this thought for you and then I promise I'm closing. The church is not perfect because we are not yet perfect, but it is being perfected. We're talking about the church. It's being perfected. We ought to love the church because the church loves us. It is our privilege to be joined together and counted as part of the body of Christ. Smile. God loves you.